All right, today we're gonna to be talking about injury and how we as coaches or sports psychologists can help our athletes get back onto the field and help them recover both physically and psychologically. In today's lesson, we're gonna outline what are some key contributors that actually can kind of affect or promote injury in sport. There is a psychological component to it. And then also too, when we want to rehab or help an athlete rehab, we have to understand what different types of personality traits go into the rehab process. Some personality traits may react to other types of treatment versus others. And the biggest thing when it comes to injury rehab is adherence for rehabilitation in general. So that's what we're gonna talk about today and I uh, hope you guys enjoy. So let's get started. So sports injury is unfortunately very common in any sport that you play in. Um, I don't know if you follow NFL, uh, but there seems to be a large amount of injuries occurring across the whole entire league and that could be for various reasons due to the 2020 um, excitement that we've been dealing with uh, lack of a training camp in the off season uh, proper off training program you know these can lead to a lot of injuries themselves also in 2009 I'm just reading my notes off here uh, studies that show that almost 92 percent of finnish athletes uh, finnish male soccer players um, had experienced at least one injury in the whole entire season as well too. So, you know, it doesn't really matter what type of sport you're playing. Injuries are going to be something you have to deal with. And as a coach or as a sports psychologist or even as an athlete, what can we do to kind of either prevent, avoid, or if we do get injured, how can we rehab properly so we can get back on the field and be both physically and mentally ready? Well, let's get started with this. So when your athlete gets injured, how do they react? Well, there's this interesting thing called the paradox of injury, and I've seen it before. I've had to deal with it with a couple of my athletes, and maybe you as a coach has you know, seen this too. If an athlete gets injured, um, you know, some athletes take this a little differently, but one case is that an athlete gets injured and they actually see it as a positive on their overall sports career. Uh, this has a lot of different factors as to why some athletes react this way, but um, a lot of times they say it gives them a feeling of introspection, kind of see, um, help them appreciate the sport more. Uh, they also found in a uh, study, Yuri and colleagues back in 97, they found out that uh, 21 elite athletes on the U.S. ski team, 80% um, who were injured have reported personal growth, uh, psychological skill enhancement, and physical technical enhancement when being injured. Um, one theory behind this is that taking time off um, allows you to um, expose yourself to a different aspect of the sport uh, itself. And what I mean by that is rather than working on technique physically, you have to work on um, imagery a little bit more. So when we're imagining our processes, you know, whether it be watching it on uh, the television or again, just imagining it um, internally, we are repeating these skill sets, but we're actually enforcing or we're kind of encouraging other uh, connections to be built up in our brain systems in order to pick up or learn a new movement or keep that movement intact. Um, now, this was something that I came across a long time ago, but um, I had the you know, fortunate uh, situation to meet with a, um, with a Vietnam War survivor and he was telling me a story. I don't know if it was his or if he learned it from somebody else, but um, uh, it was a story about a POW who was, you know, trapped in a uh, war camp and, you know, he was a major golfer. I think it was a collegiate golfer um, when he was younger and, you know, he was trapped in the camp for, I think, two years. And he said that every day he imagined himself playing around a round of golf um, every single day. And you know, when he was released from uh, released from capture, uh, he went back to the golf range, and oddly enough, his swing wasn't too far off. So that's kind of what we mean by imagery and still kind of keeping those neurons firing. And this is what can happen when you're taking significant time off due to injury. So some athletes react really well to it, others not so much. And we'll get into that and how other athletes react. What is common for most athletes to encounter when they you know, um, have a type of injury is they go through the five stages of grief. Now this is a very common and popular outline for many different things of traumatic experiences and this does apply to athletes as well. And just to kind of recap what are the five stages, the first one's going to be denial. 
So um, you've been injured and they're like, no, 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 I'm fine. I can just, you know, shake it off. I can just, you know, walk it off. Uh, the next stage is going to be anger. So, you know, they're very upset that, you know, they had this injury and they, they could have had a big contract coming up, um, you know, or they could have had the opportunity to try out for a different type of team. Um, something to where there's a bit of anger and resentment just with that given situation. And then the next part's going to be bargaining. And so with bargaining, uh, we're going to see, okay, what can we do to kind of get back on terms? So, okay, if I do a little bit of this, you know, maybe I can, uh, if I have to do some rehab real quick, that means I can get back on the field quicker. Um, and then the next one's going to be depression, you know, because that's where we start to see a full acceptance of, okay, this is my reality. I'm injured. Uh, I'm not going to be able to participate in my sport. I'm going to be separated from my team, my coaches, my training. Um, and it's a bit of a lifestyle change too, especially for elite level athletes to where this is what they do for a living. Um, and so you can really see a significant slump, so to speak, in um, energy, uh, enthusiasm, excitement, uh, especially during the time of an injury. And then the last one's going to be overall acceptance. So um, this is where we see the full level of acceptance of their injury. And this is where it's going to come up to the personality type to see how an individual is going to react. And as I said earlier, we're going to get back to what different personality types work well with certain rehab programs. All right. All right. So in 1998, Anderson's stress injury model had came out and what Anderson and his colleagues had sought to investigate are what are some of the psychological aspects that make certain athletes prone to injury? Now, there is a component to where, you know, given on you know personal background or personal history, some people are more susceptible to have injuries occur on the field. And with these, there's about five or six different factors that can kind of contribute to the likelihood of an injury, a physical injury. Um, the first one is just basic personality characteristics. If somebody has a high degree of stress in their life or they're very anxious by nature, sometimes they're going to be overreactive to certain stimuli. So one factor that's going to be really big into this is relationships. Now, if an individual is experiencing negative relationships in their life, this can oftentimes, you know, lead as a distraction to their uh, training program or what they're doing in the current task. So external stressors are a big contributing factor into um, lack of focus on the field. And again, if we're not focused, especially with some of these sports, it can be very, very dangerous. Then again, that's one thing that can lead to injury. Uh, another thing is kind of an overall history of stressors. So what kind of background does this you know, person come from? Um, does this person have a history of abuse or uh, addiction or dependency? Um, if so, again, too, that just overall contributes to the likelihood of types of injuries. If you're a coach or even you as an athlete um, have either a big competition or um, just a big season coming up, really kind of be aware of what type of stresses are going on outside of your life. If you can, try to minimize those. And then another uh, aspect, too, is um, athletes who have experienced an injury before, um, you know, this can happen to where athletes with prior injury history can be more prone to further injuries just because there's a tendency to have a, um, I want to say an anxiety of re-injury, but this fear of re-injury is, a, it's a real thing. It's very prevalent to where um, this can limit their overall movement. And then we also start to see psychosomatic um, tendencies as well too, to where an individual is afraid to, you know, whether it be fully extend a certain type of, you know, joint just because they've had a, you know, reconstruction of a, a joint, whether it be like an elbow, for example, um, they're afraid to go full range of motion because they don't want to injure it again, which can lead to further injury just because the body is so interconnected. And so, you know, past injury is kind of going to lead you prone to future injury as well, too. Okay, so let's do a hypothetical. Let's say that our athlete is injured. Now, what are some steps that we can take to help them or help them with the rehab process as quick and as effectively as possible? Well, first thing is that we have to identify what the severity of the injury is and the length of the rehab that's required. Um, for short term, you know, that's going to be roughly something less than four weeks. Now, that could be a high ankle sprain or, or a low ankle sprain, for example. Um, it could be just a bruise or something of the sort to where maybe, you know, just take a couple days off or a little bit longer. 
um, just to help heal and recover. Generally, those are okay to kind of deal with. Most athletes are used to encountering that some way or shape or form. Long-term injuries, I would say, are something four weeks or greater that could require some minor surgery. Um, chronic is something that's very reoccurring. Uh, it could be, a, you know, an old injury from college days or, you know, whether it be a surgery that didn't go so well or didn't rehab correctly. And it's an ongoing process to where you need to do more rehab or get another surgery for it. And then the last one's terminating, which is career ending. Now, this is pretty much every athlete's fear, you know, being un, un, unable to compete and practice in the sport that they absolutely love. So those are kind of the different stages of um, injury. Now, let's go a little bit into personality correlates and how do they react to rehab and what are some symptoms and what are some signs that we can, um, what we can expect to see from certain athletes. Now, neuroticism is going to be a big part of this and it shows that injuries produce a generalizing negative effect, especially in severe injury. Uh, typical responses in these type of athletes are disappointment, frustration, confusion, and depression. Um, selective attention to the negative emotions to injury and anger itself is expressed, um, you know, in the sense of, you know, I'm definitely not the same athlete I once was and I never will be. Um, you know, it's just a lot of negative um, energy towards oneself and denial and kind of withdrawing yourself from the team, the coaches, from everybody, really. And it's just very, um, eh, it's, it's a very hard situation to be around. Um, the next one's going to be kind of a more pessimistic style. Somebody who's trying to explain the situation, but kind of in a negative sense. And um, oftentimes they'll uh, blame themselves. They'll say statements like, it's my own fault. And with that too, um, you know, it's going to last a little bit longer. Um, now you're not going to get such an extreme of emotion. It's going to be a little bit more stable over time. Um, and oftentimes these expressions are, I'm never going to play again. Um, this is going to last the rest of my life. It's kind of this, you know, melancholic um, story that they're creating for themselves. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be the biggest thing. Uh, dispositional opposition is the next one. Um, and with that one, they talk often uh, about um, someone being optimistic and how this will actually help shorten the rehab process just because they're a little bit more enthused and they're a little bit more energized with, you know, recovering and following the plan. So, you know, optimism is a very key and critical personality trait that is, you know, I would say, if you can, I mean, yeah, it's a requirement. You have to somehow instill optimism, optimism in your coaches and in your injured athletes as well, too. Um, the last one is hardiness. Now, hardiness has been a very hard thing to um, quantify. And so the research on this is a little bit vague. But in 1992, Kobas, or excuse me, 1982, Kobas had kind of said that, you know, hardiness is a trait that is often developed. Um, some people can have a tendency towards hardiness, just given off of past experiences, but it's through repeated life experiences that can often create hardy individuals or people who have the willingness to um, keep moving forward even when there's adversity. Angela Duckworth came out with a book called Grit, which is another great book as well too, um, and where they talked about these people who are um, you know, kind of stoic and steadfast and are very goal driven, especially long term goals to where they see obstacles and they still want to overcome them regardless. So those are just some different personality styles that you will see in rehab. And, you know, we'll just kind of go from there. But the next thing we're going to talk about are what are some interventions that we can do for our athletes and, you know, how can we help them maintain their rehab process and, you know, just again, psyching them up mentally to get ready to get back on the field. Okay, so now we're going to cover some interventions that we can use to help our athletes recover and adhere to rehab protocol. Uh, one of the most important factors that we need to instill in our athletes is a sense of self-responsibility. Now, Gordon and colleagues back in 1991 had found that this is the number one contributing factor into rehab adherence and to help players get ready for the field. What can we do to do that, though? As psychologists or even as coaches or parents do, 
there's some things or some certain steps that we should just take. Now, let's go through these. First one is check preparations. So what are some things that the physical therapist is saying that we need to do? Do we have all the equipment? Do we have the means to carry out the rehab cor uh, correctly and consistently as well too? The next thing we need to do is get specifics. Now, we have to come down with an idea of, okay, what exactly are we going to achieve in a certain amount of time? So goal setting is going to be a big part of that. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, and then also too, going back to what type of equipment do we need? Do we need to have a certain space allocated? Do we need to make sure we have a certain timetable to adhere to um, certain times of the day and whatnot? So we have to get specific. And then as a coach or as a therapist or whatnot, uh, <laughs> this is going to be really key. And you really have to listen before you can fix it. Now, in my experience working as a personal trainer, mainly with rehabilitation too, um, you know, getting feedback from your client is so important because we're reacting based off of their pain levels is going to be a big thing. And we have to be really aware of what's going on within them. So open communication is absolutely crucial. Okay, we have to get a lot of feedback of, okay, how are you feeling about this? Does this work? Does this not? Are you able to move this direction? And with this constant feedback, we can start kind of formulating and planning out, okay, what are their limits? What are the th thresholds and how can we improve in certain areas? So got to listen before you can fix. That's a big, big rule right there. And then listen for the but. So this is going back to being able to understand limitations. <laughs> so yeah, I can, you know, walk 500 steps but it really hurts my knee when I do that. Okay, now we can start working around that. Maybe instead of doing 500 steps, we'll do 400, 10 minute break, do an extra 100, something like that. Come up with a compromise, but there's always gonna be a but in there and be really keen to that because but is usually a sense of limitation, whether it be physical or um, psychological, or it could be you know pain inhibiting too. So we wanna make sure that we mitigate the amount of pain that's going in the rehab process because if rehab process has a high amount of pain, adherence is probably gonna be pretty low. So again, the number one thing is adherence to a rehabilitation program. And the last one is value the patient's input. We talked about that again, but it's so important to get really good input from your patients and just kind of seeing, um, you know, listen to their body. They're the masters of their own body. How can we help them achieve what they need to? So those are kind of the big tips that we're going to go into. The next step is we're going to go into goal setting and how can we set up um, different goal situations to transfer into rehab and the sporting field. All right. So in this section, we're going to be talking a little bit about goals and how we can use them to help our athletes stick to their rehab program. Now, when we're gonna be looking at goals, we have to make sure they're highly personalized for the athlete themselves because the injury is personal, obviously, but every injury is a little bit different and how the athlete reacts to the injury is so important. We talked a little bit about that with the personality traits. So when we talk about um, setting up goals, we wanna make sure that we clearly define what do we want to achieve. Um, now, again, one of the big factors that always need to be uh, implemented as adherence. So we want to make sure that they're consistently working on the rehab program. Now to do this, you can do this a couple different ways. Set up reward systems. All right. So, you know, every time they do their, you know, program, let's say in a week, their um, physical therapist says, okay, I need you to do your exercises six times a week. So you ask your athlete, okay, if you're able to do these exercises, you know, throughout the whole entire week, all six times, then you can get a reward. Some athletes, it could be a Sunday, it could be a, a steak dinner, I don't know, whatever works with the athlete. That's something you and your athlete can set up. And once they do it, it's so important that you stick to that reward system, okay? <laughs> and if we don't wanna be sporadic and we don't wanna kind of, you know, fall short of our expectations. These rewards are so important to help our athlete progress and build up a routine. Um, the other most important thing that we need to do to help our athletes stay motivated and engaged is keep them part of the team. Oftentimes too, what can happen with athletes who go into rehabilitation is they become isolated from the team, the coaches, their play, uh, the, the teammates and their friends. And this is really, really important for adherence because oftentimes there's a lack of motivation when you're kind of so far separated and removed from everything that you love. So encouraging them to be part of the team, 
setting up rewards when we want to have a target behavior of, again, adhering to a certain um, program. And then also to making sure she's got plenty, she or he has plenty of support too. So family support, coaching, friends, um, equipment, whatnot. Those are going to be really key factors too. And when we're setting up these goals, set up a short-term and then a long-term goal too. You know, be realistic, but talk with coaches, talk with the physical therapist, and most importantly, talk with the client or the athlete themselves. That is the biggest thing. Okay, now we worked on our rehabilitation and now we're approaching that time marker where the physical therapist says, okay, they could be back on the field. The decision, are they ready or not? Hmm, it's a hard question to answer because, you know, is it really safe for them? Well, you have to, this is gonna be a consensus thing. You know, we have to involve the physician, we have to involve the coach, and obviously we need to involve the athlete themselves. Now, let's say this, is that we have to ask certain questions of the athlete. Are you ready to play with the pain if there's any issues? You know, set your limits. If you have pain at a certain level, when do we stop? We're gonna have the athlete kind of help them shift, you know, what are the limitations that they can set. As a coach, you can, you know, for example, put them on a snap count. Um, if you're playing football, for example, this happens a lot. You're not gonna be playing a full game. You're gonna be playing maybe 30 snaps or in basketball, you know, a time count too. You'll only be playing you know, 20 minutes compared to a longer term. You know, set realistic limits and expectations. And, you know, this probably should be a slow process of reintroducing them back on the field. Um, but again, too, this is something that's going to be established by the coach, the therapist, and the athlete themselves, too. So those are some big things um, to kind of physically get ready for. And then psychologically, we have to use, um, you know, it's really important, too, if you can help the athlete psychologically be ready for this. Now, you know, going through various drills and routines making sure that they're comfortable, you know, moving in, you know, kind of interacting back with the team, getting used to a schedule, making sure they're psychologically set for this as well, too. There's a lot of different steps that we can, but we don't want to neglect the most important part, and that's readiness and what does the client tell you. Again, make sure the client is comfortable, because if they're not, chances of re-injury are pretty high, right? So those are some certain things to kind of consider when we're going to reintroduce an athlete back into the field. What does the therapist say? What does the physician say? What does the coach say? And what does the athlete say? These are some very important things. All right. So just to recap, we talked a little bit about what exactly um, sports injuries, you know, how do they happen? How often can they happen? Um, <laughs> what are some factors that can lead to sports injury and how do athletes react to them? You know, what could we do to help athletes recover from them? Goal settings, you know, one of the biggest things, making sure we set up good rewards. But the biggest thing too is getting a lot of input from your athlete. When it comes to injury rehabilitation, it's so important to look to your athlete and help them form a plan that works for them to carry out their rehab process to get them back on the field. If you guys like the video, please make sure to subscribe and press the like button. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me down below. It's going to be my email address. And uh, guys, I hope you enjoy and hopefully this helps you out. Take care. Bye.